I'm going to demonstrate how to perform a pack cell volume, also known as a PCV, and a protein on the plasma by refractometry. So you want to start with a EDTA tube that is um, unclotted and well mixed. So you just want to mix your tube after collection by gentle inversion and prior to doing any testing because the blood will settle out. If you are concerned there might be clots in your sample, take an applicator stick and just rum it around inside the sample and any clots will appear on the stick. If there's no clots, you are good to go. Fill two PCV tubes, about three quarters full. If you're having trouble filling your tube, let gravity be your friend and fill it approximately three quarters full. There is no right or wrong end to these tubes, even though one is marked with a blue line. The only thing that I recommend is to not fill your tube right to that blue line because then it makes it a bit more difficult to read your PCV. After you have filled your tube, you want to wipe off the outside of any blood just so you don't get blood in your sealant. Um, and you can give it a couple of pushes with the sealant before you go to spin it just to make sure that it doesn't blow out. So I'm going to go over to our microhematocrit centrifuge. And the reason I've spun two tubes is you may need two tubes of plasma for your refractometer protein. We'll spin our uh, Micromatocrit tubes, you want to make sure that your sealant is to the outside ring. If that doesn't happen, you are going to end up with a bloody glassy mess. Um, put them across from one another so the centrifuge is balanced. I'm going to put our lid on. Gently put the lid down and we will press start. So this one spins for five minutes at 13,300 RPM. So once the time has elapsed, we open the lid, remove the cover plate, and we have our spun samples inside. These ones are obvious, are quite hemolyzed. You always want to review your plasma color when you take them out of the centrifuge. Once your tubes have been removed from the centrifuge, you need to look at the plasma to check for any color changes. This tube is normal plasma color. This is showing hemolysis. This tube is a slight degree of lipemia as well as some hemolysis and this tube is showing a fairly marked degree of yellow color or icterus. So once you have observed the plasma color, then you would go on to read the packed cell volume. The packed cell volume is determined using a reader, and in this particular case, you put the interface of the plasticine and the blood at the bottom of the red line where it says zero and you put the interface of the plasma and air at the top where it says 100 and then you move down to find where the top of the red cell layer lies you always want to read your Paxol volume underneath the Buffy coat, so that will be the white layer that you find on top of the red cells. The size of the Buffy coat will vary depending upon the white blood cell count and the platelet count. Both white cells and platelets are in the Buffy coat. So in this case, your Paxol volume is looking to be at 50 percent or 0 0.50 liters per liter. Once you have read your PEXA volume, you'll move on to do your uh, plasma protein by refractometry. And bearing in mind that this um, measurement is very susceptible to interferences, such as high glucose, uh, lipemia. If you have a small sample volume, you'll get a falsely elevated um, 
protein. So just be sure that if you do get a result that you don't think is reasonable, check it with a chemistry protein. I am going to transfer the plasma from this tube onto the refractometer platen. And you do that by breaking the tube just above the red cell layer. So push it away from you. And then turn it over so that you use the unbroken end if you do end up tapping it onto your platen. Most refractometers um, may have a little notch in here that will allow you to touch the end of the tube to suck the plasma onto the platen, but this one doesn't have that. So we'll try and let um, capillary action fill the platen. And this is where you'll probably need a second tube. We don't encourage blowing plasma out. So once your plasma is adequately on the platen, which will be easy to see, it's dark rather than a mottled or mostly light, then you bring your instrument up to your eye and you look through it and find the appropriate scale. On this refractometer, it says SP for serum protein and then it says grams per 100 ml and you look for a clear straight line interface. There's a dark and a light break and that is where you read your result and in this case it's 76 grams per liter or 7.6 grams per 100 ml. If you have lipemia or hemolysis it can make reading that line very difficult and in those cases we don't guess we just say we can't provide the protein. Once you're done, you can just wipe your platen off with a Kleenex and then with distilled water to keep it clean.